Hi there folks, my name is Cameron Hansen and I would like to welcome you to this lecture on the seven basic quality tools. By the end of this course, you will know what the seven basic quality tools are and you'll also have a general understanding of how and why each one of the seven basic quality tools may be used. Well, let's get things started by first providing a general usage definition of the seven basic quality tools. Officially, the seven basic quality tools are a group of highly efficient proven tools developed by many different quality gurus. Some of those gurus include names like Philip Crosby, Dr. W. Edwards Deming, and notably, Dr. Ishikawa, who was ultimately given credit for the development of the group of the seven basic quality tools. As implied in the name, there are seven tools in the group set. The tools assist organizations in understanding their processes, products, and systems, and then providing a means of improving those processes, products, and systems. The seven tools are the process map, which may be a flow process chart or a simple process chart, the control chart, also known as process control chart, the Pareto chart or the Pareto diagram, the cause and effect diagram, commonly referred to as the fishbone diagram for its fish-like resemblance or Ishikawa diagram after the founder, Karu Ishikawa, the histogram, the check sheet, and last but not least, the scatter chart. Well, now that we understand a little bit about who developed the seven basic quality tools and just what those tools are, let's look a little closer at each one of these important tools. Well, if you recall from our list earlier, the first of the seven basic tools is the process map. The process map is used to help employees and organizations understand the finite details and obtain a thorough description of the process it's being applied to. The other very important aspect of a process map is to visually identify the process or system that it's being used on. Officially, the process map can, can take or be defined as a diagram of the flow of production process or service process through a system, standard symbols are often used to designate processing, flow directions, branching decisions, and inputs and outputs. There are various ways to formulate a process map. Some include gathering a team of subject matter experts and analysts to use post-it notes individually listing the process steps and laying them out in sequence on a wall. Another way would be to use digital applications such as Visio, Excel, or even SigmaFlow. The next tool in the seven basic tool set is the control chart. Officially, the control chart can be defined as a graphical comparison of the process performance in the current state with predetermined standards or control limits. The illustration shown here shows a control chart. As you can see, the center line represents an established mean value. Additionally, the UCL, or upper control limits, and the LCL, or lower control limits, define the desired level of control on the chart. In general, if all the data is inputted into the chart template and the chart populated readings within the LCL and the UCL control limits, you could assume the process variation was under control. Now that we understand the process flow and have identified as many flaws in the process as possible, the next step might be to conduct a Pareto analysis. Conducting a Pareto analysis will help place each of the issues and flaws into categories based on the characteristics you will establish. Pareto's Law is a concept defined by the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto. It states that a small percentage of a group will usually have the largest impact. In other words, the 80-20 rule, as it's sometimes referred to, 
suggests that most effects come from relatively few causes. The general assumption is that 80% of the effects come from about 20% of the possible causes. The next tool we'll talk about is the cause and effect diagram. The cause and effect diagram is one of the most common and well-known quality tools available. Developed by Dr. Ishikawa, the cause and effect diagram is a method of linking and organizing factors that affect an issue or problem being investigated. The ultimate goal of the cause and effect diagram is to identify all of the possible causes of an effect and investigate further with the intention of discovering root causes. The cause and effect is commonly paired with the 5Y analysis to discover root causes. The idea is, when a root cause is eliminated, you can prevent the issue from happening again and bringing the process back into conformance. The next tool in our set of seven basic quality tools is the histogram. The histogram is another bar graph which looks similar to the Pareto, but is used to display the frequency of distribution for elements and data, such as temperature, weight, and oftentimes dimension in a process. The histogram will show the amount of variation along with the range of variation within a process. As you can see in this example, the frequency is shown on the y-axis and the range of variation are shown on the x-axis. The next tool in our set of seven basic quality tools is the check sheet. And the check sheet is oftentimes a great place to start improvement initiatives. The reason is the check sheets are a simple and easy to use tool for summarizing occurrences of specific events through tally counting. One important thing to keep in mind when creating a check sheet is that the team members who are creating the check sheets have ample amounts of time to create and gather accurate data. The last of the seven basic tools is the scatter chart. The scatter chart has a few different names. It is sometimes referred to as cross plot, scatter diagram, or scatter plot. The tool is used to show the relationship between two variables. The diagram has a horizontal or x-axis and a vertical or y-axis to represent the two variables being tested. The y-axis is generally a dependent variable. Specifically, it is more often than not the one that changes in relation to the variable in the x-axis. As shown here, if you were to draw a line diagonally from the interior corner of the graph to the upper right-hand portion of the graph, it would reveal that the points are fairly close together and furthermore show a trend moving upward and to the right. This means that an increase in the Y may be dependent upon an increase in the X and therefore, if X can be controlled, there is a good possibility that Y can be controlled too. In other words, one task may in fact be linked to the other. Those are the seven basic quality tools. Now that you know what these traditional improvement tools are, we suggest you go and apply them. Now, as we advance into later lectures of the seven basic quality tools, we will take a deeper dive into each one sharing with you how to use and create your own versions of these powerful quality tools. Thanks again for joining us and learning about the seven basic quality tools. We'll speak to you soon.